Hey everybody, Mo here, and in this video, I'm going to give you guys tips on every single team game to make sure that you guys never lose another team game again. Because all I see is people complaining about team games in Fall Guys, and I'll be honest, when I first started playing Fall Guys, all I complained about were team games in Fall Guys, until I realized that I was the problem. And now, ever since I realized I was the problem, and I figured out these amazing tips to help me win, my finals appearance has gone up, and my wins are insane. I have over 50, 60 something wins in the last couple days. It just right after I stopped, and was like, hmm, maybe I'm the problem. This is how I should win all these team games. So, hopefully, after you guys watch this video, and you hear all these tips, and you start applying them, you two will also have an insane amount of finals appearances, and get up to 50, 60, 70 wins. So I'll start with the first, and this is the only general tip, and this is the most important tip that I could give you guys, is that you don't need to win team games. What this means is you you don't have to have the highest amount of points, you don't have to have the highest score, you just have to be not last. So, for example, if you're messing up yellow team because they're in last place and you're bullying them, and you see somebody else also trying to mess up yellow team, leave them alone. Just let them do their thing. You don't need to grab that guy. Just keep messing up yellow team. You both mess up yellow team. Because fun fact, who cares if they have 30 points? As long as you have more points than yellow team, yellow team gets knocked out and you go on to the next round. That's all that matters. If you guys can drill that into your head, that alone, if you don't want to watch any other part of this video, if you just want to click off now, that alone will get you more finals appearances and win you more team games than anything else on this list. Is just recognize that you do not need to win these team games. You just need to be not last. Team game number one is Rock and Roller. This is the mini game where you have to push your little ball as a team down a little course, and then there's a ramp at the end that you have to push down. You guys know this game. So the biggest tip I can give for this one, the number one tip, is push the dang ball, guys. Just push your ball. Stop trying to insta grief the other teams when your ball's still at the 20% mark and you know not even out the first half. It does no good for you to try and grief and stop the other team when your ball's not even out yet. It's just push the ball. I promise that if you and your entire team is pushing the ball the entire way and one or two idiots from the other team comes and tries to grief you, if they just send one person who wasn't pushing their ball and they're sitting there waiting for you, they're like, oh, I'm going to get this team as soon as they could drop down. If three or four of you are pushing the ball, one person is not going to stop you. Fun fact, four people are a lot stronger than one. Like, they won't even make you blink twice. They're going to stand in front of you and think that they're so clever and having so much fun because they're going to grief you. Oh, I'm going to get this team. And you're just going to roll right over them because you have four people pushing the ball in that way. So it's not even crazy. If you do start to get griefed, however, it's tip number two. If you do start to get griefed by three or four people, it's a decent amount. Jump whenever you push the ball. Jumping while you push the ball will give it upwards momentum. And then eventually it'll just give it enough height to where it'll just go right over the people trying to grief you on the other side. So if you're jumping, especially since you're going down a slope, the people griefing you can't ever push the ball over you since you're above them. So you just keep jumping and slowly the ball will eventually just hop over the people trying to grief you and it'll ignore them, go by them, and then they'll never catch up to it again. But the number one tip on this one is just push the ball. Stop trying to insta grief people. Just push the ball. The next game we're going to be talking about here is hoops a daisy so hoops a daisy the number one thing i can give you is just pick a spot on the map and own that spot that is your spot you get every ring on that spot and you will win this is mostly done by the little spinny things in the middle i always try and hang out there because those can give you momentum to blast off into any direction you need to let's say there's a ring right on the dizzy thing then there you go you're already right there if there's one a little bit of ways well you know, just let the dizzy thing give you momentum that way. And then now you have this little speed boost type thing as your way over there. The number one thing I can tell you not to do is don't run around, try and get hoops that are way out of your range. All you're going to do is just waste your time trying to get there. Someone's going to beat you to it. And then you're going to turn around, try and chase down another one. Someone's going to beat you to it because you're out of position because you just tried to chase after the first ring. And then now you're just caught in the cycle of you don't want to stand still, but you can never catch anything because people are going to beat you to it. So just pick one spot, whether that's on the giant ramps and you're just waiting for a hoop to spawn there, or if it's on the dizzy thing so you can get momentum going anywhere, it doesn't matter. Just own a little portion of the map and say, this is where I'm going to sit. And I'm going to get every ring that pops up here and you'll find yourself winning a lot more hoopsie daisy maps. Next game we're going to talk about is fall ball. 
the number one thing in fall ball that I see everybody do and I don't understand is everybody dives at everything. Stop over diving. Yes, there are some scenarios where diving can give you enough power to push it past the last defender. But most of the time, people are diving in scenarios where diving's not good or diving does literally nothing. People dive way too much in this game. First of all, jump diving actually does nothing. It does actual nothing. It takes all of your momentum from jumping upwards and then cuts it in half when you go forward. So if you jump dive into a ball that's in the air, you're just going to bounce right off the ball and nothing's going to happen. And then if you jump dive onto a ball that's on the ground, you would have just been better originally diving into it and putting all of your momentum forward instead of half of your momentum upwards. So it actually makes no sense to ever jump dive. Second of all, jumping is just strictly better because if you jump into a ball that's on the ground, it'll give the ball upward momentum, like previously, you know, stated in the rock and rollers, and it'll give the ball upward momentum and then just fly over the opponent just like in rock and roller and then they won't be able to block it because you can only jump a little bit in fall guys this is the same concept for anyone that's ever played rocket league before diving into the ball in fall guys is the equivalent of flipping into the ball in rocket league this gives the ball's forward momentum but the ball stays on the ground the entire time and it's super easy for anybody to just block it and then hit the ball right back to you jumping on the other hand hits the ball up and pops it over your opponent which makes it a lot harder to hit, especially in a game like Fall Guys, where you can only jump a little bit. The amount of games where I've seen people just single-handedly carry because we were jumping into the ball and not diving, and the ball was just going over their heads, and the ball was literally impossible to block. There's more than I can count, just strictly up because everyone else was diving and we're just jumping. The second biggest tip I can give you in Fall Ball is to grab an opponent that's trying to get a free kickoff goal. This means the after someone scores a goal and the ball drops into the center, you know, and there's a chance for you to jump up and then just hit it over everyone's head and get a free insta goal. Yeah, it doesn't matter how good you think you are at kickoff goals. Unless you're up literally three goal lead or some ridiculous amount of lead, there's no reason to risk a 50-50 to give your opponent a free goal to help them catch up. Just grab the person that's trying to get a free goal on your opponent's team and then let somebody else hit the ball. Even if somebody else on the opposing team, that's fine because at least they didn't send the ball 500 feet in the air and make it impossible to block and get a free goal. The next game we're going to be talking about here is Jinxed. So the key to carrying Jinxed is actually to get Jinxed really, really early and then catch as many people. Ideally, you just start as the Jinxed person so it doesn't feel like you're inting. But if you don't start as the Jinxed person, just try to get Jinxed super, super early. And that's going to sound really, really backwards because the goal of Jinxed is to have people on your team not jinxed while the other team gets completely jinxed but look at it like this if you run for the entirety of the match that essentially scores you one point because that's one person on your team that isn't jinxed even if you're the last person that's one person however if you get jinxed early but then you proceed to tag five six to seven people on the other team you just net scored your team five to six points plus most of the games in jinx really come down to one to two players on each team anyways so even if you do manage to make it to the very very end and you're not jinxed you're probably only one of maybe two people on your team at that point so by the time you do get jinxed there's literally nothing you can do to help your team because again the other team's also only going to have one person that i'm sure everybody is chasing down at this point so if you do make it that late you're not actually helping your team once you do get jinxed unless you can go the entire match without getting jinxed which is really hard to do towards the end because you'll have 20 people chasing you down like it's day z it's a lot better just to get jinxed early, jinx a bunch of the enemy team, and then get a good lead that way and carry your team that way. The next game we'll talk about here is team tail tag. Uh, the very obvious way to carry your team here is to get a tail and then keep it for the entirety of the round. If you don't end the game with the tail, you cannot blame your teammates. Even if you having a tail would not have mattered, even if, let's say your, your score was zero, and then you say, oh, well, if I had a tail, I would only have one point anyway, so we still lost, my team sucks. You can't say that when you yourself did not have a tail. You cannot blame your teammates for doing the same thing you did. That makes no sense. So, get a tail, end the game with the tail, is the point blank, is the super base. That's the first thing you should always do, is try and get a tail. The second thing is, if you're good enough, don't just get yourself a tail. Try and get your teammates tails. Grab onto opposing members that have tails, slow them down so your teammates can catch up. You know, if you're right on top of someone on blue team that has a tail, grab them. Let your teammate that's behind you try and run up and grab their tail. There you go. Now you just scored your team a tail. So now it's like you have two, twice as many tails on your team. So there you go. You can say that you carried that way. So that's another way you can carry 
while without just having a tail and keeping it the whole time there's a lot more to these games that a lot of people think at face level a lot of people think oh well i got my tail i did my job my team sucks or i pushed the ball i got one point my team sucks it's a lot more to that there's so much more people can be doing that they're just not a third and a final tip for team tail tag is actually if you aren't great at catching people but you're really really good at running away and keeping a tail you can steal teammates tails um so at the start of the game you can just look for a teammate's tail and grab it and that way you get to start off with the tail and now you just get to run around the entire time and keep your tail it doesn't affect your score any so you don't lose points and all it does is play to the strengths of your team so it's definitely a good strategy that you can use to help your team out you know why give yourself a handicap and force yourself to try and catch a tail when you know you're really bad at it go ahead and play to your strengths give yourself a tail by stealing from a teammate where it's really easy and then just play to your strength of never being caught and there you go that's one way you can help your team out but if you uh, were wondering how to catch tails really easy here's a really quick and really easy strategy that i use that guarantees you catch a tail every time so right here i call this the stalk your prey strategy you sit around the corner right here and you can use your little camera to go around so you can peek around corners kind of like you know because you're in third person and then what you do is you see somebody with the tail come around the corner here like i see here and you just sit here and you wait and then you don't pop out until they're really close to you and then once they start to get close to you is when you pop out of nowhere they won't see you coming because they can't see around corners that early you pop out you grab their tail and then you just keep on running and then now they're going to be behind you because you pushed them you know you knocked them over you grabbed their tail and because they're behind you and you guys go the same speed they'll never catch up to you so you have to start doing jukes and this can guarantee i guarantee you this works every single time anytime i don't have a tail or i lose my tail and tail tag i do this strategy and i get a tail every single time it works every time guys so there's an easy way for you to get tails the second to last game we're going to talk about here is egg scrambler and this is by far the easiest game mode to hard carry in in team game modes so the first step is to grab as many eggs in the middle at the start as possible without fighting don't bother trying to fight for golden eggs don't bother trying to grab and fight enemies for whatever egg just go into the middle grab as many eggs as you can throw them into your basket and just keep going back and forth until there are no eggs left in the starting pit and you want to try and get your team a pretty good lead and this is going to set up right into tip two so after you have all the eggs and the middle are gone you want to look at the scoreboard and then you just want to bully the heck out of whatever the lowest team is and this helps reinforce the very first rule i talked about where you don't have to win you don't have to have the most amount of points at the end of the team game you just need to be not last so if you think about it if both teams bully and attack the team with the lowest score it guarantees that you qualify for the next round if red team and blue team gang up on yellow there's no possible way that yellow team can defend off two full teams by themselves and not just get completely wrecked and there's no way that blue and yellow or blue and red team are going to have a lower score than yellow team because that's twice as many people fighting them you know so there you go if you just look at whoever has the lowest score and you just take all their eggs if your team starts with the lowest score just look around to see which team has the fewer people guarding their eggs fewer people in the basket this will make it easier for you and your team to steal eggs from them uh, for those of you that don't know the fastest way to actually throw eggs across the map is to jump and dive at the same time and then you let go of your egg right after you start diving this will give your egg all the forward momentum and it'll just shoot wherever you aim Try to use the little spinning hammers that are in front of your basket to guarantee that your egg gets hit into the basket. If it doesn't make it all the way, let's say it makes it almost to your basket and it's just chilling there. If you throw it to the correct side, the spinning hammer will just knock it right into the back of the basket for you. This will save you a lot of time from having to walk back and forth all the way to your basket and then the person that you're trying to steal the eggs from. And the last game I'm going to talk about here is hoarders. So in hoarders, I always start by grabbing the opponent at the start of the round because of how everyone is positioned at the start of the round people have to walk by you around you behind the ball to try and push the ball to their side if you grab someone that's trying to run around you that'll give your teammates plenty of time to get around the other person and then push the ball to your side way before the person you're holding gets loose that's just a way to get at least one free ball because your teammate should be able to push that ball into your side while you're holding the enemy team uh, the second 
tip I give for hoarders is focus on pushing balls into your third of the field before you start griefing your opponents. The same rule applies as the egg game. Look for whichever team has the fewest amount of balls and then go and try and take those balls from them. After you get a decent number of balls in your third, this means, you know, about two to three balls at least, you want to look to absolutely bully and punish the team with the fewest balls at this point. You do this by getting onto the little raised triangle on their side and then you just knock away any balls that they try to push over it. Since you're on top of the platform and they're trying to push it up into you and over you, you already have a huge advantage over them when it comes to the counter push because you have things like you're pushing downwards, they can never jump and push the ball over you. All you have to do is just dive at the ball or push the ball and it'll automatically already go over them since you're already above them and stuff. And like in all other ball games, try to use jump as much as possible to pop the balls up and over your opponent's heads. Sometimes this will even give it up and over the initial hump and just completely skip if anyone's trying to grief you or defend the balls on your side. Sometimes you can jump and it'll just go right over their heads and go right into the little pocket on your side and it guarantees you some free balls. So there you guys go. Those are some tips for every single team game in Fall Guys. If you start using these tips, you'll notice your amount of final round appearances go up drastically because I know I did. If you learned something new from this video, or if you have any other questions you want answered, just make sure to leave a comment below and hit the like button because it really, really helps with the YouTube algorithm. Also, make sure to go follow me on Twitch and subscribe here on YouTube because I stream every single day on Twitch and I post videos every day here on YouTube. Make sure to join the Discord below so you don't miss any notifications. Appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you in the next video.